Hi, so in this video, we're going to try and talk about a concept called CAGR, Compounded Annualized Growth Rate, uh, and its usage in finance. Now, this is a very common uh, term that gets used. We talk about companies who have grown sales at a CAGR of a certain percentage or profits at a CAGR of a certain percentage. You look at websites uh, that are talking about the company's earnings growth. You look at company uh, management commenting on company growth and they're talking about this term called CAGR, right? It's also a little bit less understood term and we need to understand the applications and usage of it as we go along, right? Now in this, remember the C uh, stands for compounded. And so the key element here is in terms of understanding how does the compounding part work here, right? So let's start with a question. Let's assume a company had sales in the year 2020 it had sales of 10,000 crore and in the year 2024, the sales went to 20,000 crore, right? Now, what is the CAGR or compounded growth rate? A common answer which tends to be incorrect that we get a lot of the times is overall absolute growth is 100% and this has happened in a period of four years. So we'll divide 100 by four and we'll get the answer as 25. Now, if this was simple interest or a concept of simple growth where the principle is intact and you're only growing on that principle, right? Remember the concept of simple interest, then this is fine, right? If we grow 100 ko ya or 10,000 or 25% grow kar rahe hai, or simple interest assume, kar rahe hai, 25% is the correct answer. Then 25% is the correct answer. But here we are assuming compounding, right? Compounded annualized growth rate. Now, when you're assuming compounding, then this 10,000 has to grow at a certain rate G and it grows to become 10,000 into 1 plus G after the first year. Now this entire amount is going to grow again at a rate 1 plus G in the second year. Entire amount going to grow at a rate of 1 plus G in the third year and so on and so forth in the fourth year. And our question says this becomes 20,000, right? So the answer is not as straightforward as 100% divided by 4. The answer would be slightly lower than that because, you know, there is a growth that is kind of playing out. So this can be written as 10,000 into 1 plus G raised to the power 4 is 20,000. I can then solve for it. So I can do 1 plus G is equals to 20,000 by 10,000. Then, you know, I can take the fourth root of both sides. So 1 by 4 and then I can subtract this 1 from here. So I can say G will be equal to this minus one. Correct. Let's solve that on Excel. So I'll say that 2020, my number is 10,000. 2024, my number is 20,000. What I'm trying to do is calculate the CAGR, which is 20,000 divided by 10,000 raised to the power one by four minus one. Correct. That's my formula. I enter and you'll see we get a number if I convert it to percentages 18.92 percent. Now what is the interpretation is that if 10,000 grows at 18.92 percent compounded for four years you will receive you will receive 20,000 at the end of four years right that's the context of how do you go about applying CAGR as a concept right now of course uh, things can change and you could play out there, but we will try and also generalize this concept. So how do you generalize this concept? To generalize the concept, remember we said 10,000 is equals to, you know, so basically 10,000 into 1 plus G raised to the power 4 is 20,000 and then we solved for G. If you remember, the solution for G was final value divided by initial value raised to the power 1 by n, n being the number of years, minus 1. So if I was to give you another question where I said, okay, let's change this and let's put it here and say that this became, let's say in 2025, this became 30,000, right? So now the formula will be final value, which is 30,000 divided by initial value raised to the power 1 by the number of years. Even this can be parameterized or made dynamic by looking at the difference of the years, but I'll keep it simple, 1 by 5 minus 1. And that gives me the answer as 24.57%. If you want to calculate it again and back calculate and check, 
10,000 multiplied by 1 plus 24.57 percent raised to the power 5 should be 30,000. So that's the back calculation that gives you the answer. Now why is this important is because compounding is not a concept that comes and fits in our head very easily. So we have to be careful when we are using this as a concept and understanding this. Companies report details in CAGR terms and over a period of time what has been the sales CAGR, what has been the profit CAGR. You will note this is also available on websites like Screener if you look at the profit and loss statement and just below that you will see companies are giving details of sales and profit CAGR around that period or stock price CAGR around that period. What it is basically saying is that there is a compounding being assumed here. What is the overall growth? that has happened over that period is what is being kind of looked at on a compounded basis correct now why is this important is because let's say if i ask you a question about uh, you know a stock giving you 50 percent return in the first year or let's say 100 percent return in the first year and minus 50 percent in the second year then what is the average return and a lot of the times just immediate intuitive understanding is 100 minus 50 is 50 50 by 2 is 25 so the average return should be 25 but remember in stocks or in finance you are compounding so when you invest 100 rupees 100 growing at 100 percent will become 200 and then 200 again growing at minus 50 percent is going to become 100 so the return is actually zero correct and this is nothing but the CAGR calculation that we are doing that your initial value is 100 your final value is 100 so it should be equivalent to zero another way to look at CAGR is basically what is the geometric mean that you're finding for this set of growth rates in between, right? The growth rates that are coming, what is the geometric mean of those growth rates that you're looking at is what is going to give you the CAGR that is going to work out. Let's try that out as well. So let's say a particular investment grows from 10,000 to 12,000 to 15,000 to 20,000 over multiple years. And the growth rates that you're calculating is you know 20 percent and 25 percent and 33 percent over that period now CAGR if I were to calculate CAGR if I were to calculate is going to be final value by initial value raised to the power remember this is three years now so one by three minus one that's my CAGR that we have calculated correct now what is geometric mean let's go and understand geometric mean once so I'll just erase all of this and let's try and understand. So we say that 10,000 in the first year grew at a rate R1, in the second year grew at a rate R2, in the third year grew at a rate R3 to give me 20,000. CAGR tells you that 10,000 grew at a rate G, which is the average for three years to give me 20,000. Since both the equations are equal, that means 1 plus R1, 1 plus R2, and 1 plus R3 is equals to 1 plus G raised to the power 3. I will take the third root of this. So this 3 goes away. I subtract. I will get the same data of G. I should get the same data of G. So if I was to do that, what I will do is I will add 1 to all of these. Right? We take the product of these three that's basically your geometric mean calculation right raised to the power 1 by 3 minus 1 and ideally you should get the same number we will get the same number that is available in the form of CAGR right so CAGR is nothing but the geometric mean remember once again we are trying to basically find out and parameterize the CAGR formula which exists here and we are trying to basically look at final value by initial value raised to the power 1 by n minus 1. Try this out, pick up any numbers, check company's sales from a particular year to another year and then try and calculate the CAGR. Final by initial raised to the power 1 by n minus 1. That's your formula for the CAGR. That's it in this particular video. Thank you.